everybody, it is Ed Johnson, AKA Mount Netty, your Steamboat Springs Realtor. If you're looking to buy, sell, or invest in the Steamboat Springs area, please reach out and get in touch with me. Today, what I wanted to do was talk about the commute from Denver or Denver International Airport, DIA, to Steamboat Springs. As you can tell, I am driving, so my eyes are gonna be, for the most part, on the road. I'm currently driving on I-70, and I do this all the time, so I wanted to give some, some tips, some pointers, some insight on what you're looking on what you're looking at, essentially. So I like to make the analogy that going to Steamboat is a lot like going to that area at the ski resort where you have to take off your skis or your snowboard and hike about 10 or 15 minutes to get to. A lot of times that eliminates a lot of people from going there, but when you do get there, that's where the good snow is, that's where it's special. And I feel Steamboat's very similar in that sense. You do have to work a little bit harder to get there. 45 minutes, an hour more than some of the other ski resorts, but when you do get there, it's worth it. So, the elephant in the room, of course, is I-70. It stinks, it's like a bad smelling skunk, not that there's ever a good smelling skunk. Bad sulfur springs. It's a horrible road, uh, a lot of the times, and that's because of a number of reasons. There's not enough lanes, the lanes merge, in bad areas, there can be you know, avalanches, rockfall, construction. Actually, I believe there's a 25 minute delay right now as I'm driving, so that's all due to construction. And you have to kind of get prepared for that. So when you leave Denver, you want to do basically a straight shot, maybe listen to a podcast from Joe Rogan or Ed Milet. Oh, here we go, I'm already in a delay. So this is a prime example of driving on I-70. And today is Tuesday morning. So this doesn't just happen on Saturdays or Sunday mornings. Uh, this is due to construction. So you're driving a steamboat. One of the first places you might want to consider stopping is Idaho Springs. I usually go past it, but Idaho Springs is a nice place to stop if you want to grab some, some breakfast or some lunch or some dinner and maybe fill up on gas. It's a good spot. After that, there's Dumont. I'll show you Dumont. And there's a Starbucks there. There's also a ski shop there if you need to pick up anything. And from there, you really need to make some decisions because there's really three different ways to get to Steamboat Springs. There's the way that most people go, which is I-70 to the Silverthorne exit, and then you take Silverthorne to Kremlin and then Kremlin over to Steamboat. And then there is the Winter Parkway. So if there's maybe an avalanche or an accident up by the Eisenhower Tunnel and you can't go through the tunnel, there is another way to go and that is over Berthet Pass through Winter Park to Granby, the back way to Kremlin. Without traffic, it's about an extra 30 to 45 minutes to get to Steamboat, but it's a good option to consider if there is a issue at the Eisenhower Tunnel. And the third way, which uh, I've never really taken the way home this way, and there's no real reason to normally, but the third way is to go over Vail Pass, so keep going on I-70 through the Eisenhower Tunnel, over Vail Pass, and then you take a right at the Walcott exit, which is in between uh, Edwards and Eagle, and you go the back way through Oak Creek to Steamboat. And the only reason I would consider taking that is if the uh, if Rabbit Ears Pass is closed. So if Rabbit Ears Pass is closed, that would be a good option. So as we're going along here, I might stop, give a little input, but it's not a bad drive, really. I break it into three sections and I'll show you that now. Here we have Idaho Springs. Sometimes if the traffic's bad, you might want to think about getting off. This is not that unusual. 
we'll do a nice little drive through Idaho Springs and back on I-70. So this is Idaho Springs and if you spent a lot of time on I-70, it's a good place to stop, it's a cool little town, to grab some lunch, take a break, stretch the legs, and this gives you a little bit of an idea of what a mess it can be in on I-70. There's a westbound and down, good little brewery, another little tavern. So just a little stop, if need be, off of I-70 on the way to Steamboat. Bojo's Pizza. Good pizza there. Okay, so this is the Empire Grand B exit, which goes over Bertha Pass to Winter Park. And you would take this exit to go the back way. The only time I would recommend really doing that is if the Eisenhower Tunnel is shut down for whatever reason. You would get off here, go the back way. It's pretty scenic, however, if you wanna change it up, take this way, it adds, like I said, about 30 minutes to 45 minutes. And there you have it, the Empire Grandy exit. Otherwise, you're gonna keep going. You're gonna go through the Eisenhower Tunnel from here down the other side and exit at Silverthorne. So on the way to a lot of the ski areas, you're gonna go through the Eisenhower Tunnel. And there's the Loveland Ski Area, which goes right above it. Great spot. A lot of locals in Denver love Loveland. Have a chance to check it out, I highly recommend it. So once you get to this point, you're gonna feel like you accomplished something. You're gonna go through this tunnel and down the other side where you'll want to downshift. Typically, if you can, to fourth or third on the way down to save your brakes. At the bottom of the hill, you'll come to Silverthorne. Once you're through the Eisenhower Tunnel, you are now on the other side of the Continental Divide. Give yourself a pat on the back because you're in the west. You can see the mountains there in the distance. Down the hill we go. So when you get to the other side of the tunnel, the first exit is going to be the Silverthorne Dillon exit. You're gonna wanna take a right here and get off and go all the way to Kremling. And really, this is kind of the first leg in the trip. This is where I start to breathe a sigh of relief because after this, you don't have to deal with a major highway or usually a lot of traffic. So from here, from Silverthorne, we're gonna take a right, go to Kremlin, and this is a great stop here. It's the 7-Eleven Dunkin' Donuts exit, or stop. So very popular stop for people driving to Steamboat. Okay, so this is a tip, this is a heads up. When you're going through Silverthorne and the lanes change from two lanes, they merge into one lane, you're gonna wanna make that phone call or send that text message or email if they're urgent because it's only a few miles after that when cell service goes away for about uh, half an hour, 45 minutes until you get to Kremlin. So it doesn't matter what cell phone service you have. I don't care if you have AT&T, Verizon. On this stretch right here, in just a little bit, there will be no cell phone service. So heads up, make that call. So a heads up, when you start to see the deer crossing signs, pay attention to those. And I can't stress it enough on this section, 
especially at night, there's a lot of deer. So you'll want to keep two hands on the wheel, not like I'm doing right now, and your eyes glued to the road, especially if you're going at night. So there's one of my tips, and this is on the road from Silverthorne to Kremlin. Okay, so after you've driven for a while, when you turn on Silverthorne, you're gonna eventually come to Kremlin. And another one of my tips is stopping at the Middle Park Meat Company. This is where I pick up a lot of my meat for the week. And really Kremlin, this is the second leg of the three leg trip as I like to break it up into the one from Denver to Silverthorne and then Silverthorne to Kremlin. From here, you're just gonna go into Kremlin. It's your last time to get gas and it's 45 minutes from there to Steamboat over Rabbit Ears Pass. So congratulations, you've arrived in Kremlin. It's not much to see here, but it's a few places you can stop, grab a bite, make sure you have some gas for that drive to Steamboat. And here is the one light in Kremlin where you're gonna stop, take a left, and from there, it's a straight shot all the way to Steamboat. So on the drive from Kremlin to Steamboat, you're gonna start seeing the famous FM Light and Suns signs, and you're gonna see a lot of them. And it's kind of like a sign that you're on the home stretch. FM Light is a store in Steamboat, they sell a lot of Western wear, been around, I don't know how many generations, many generations. And they have signs that are all along this road on the way to Steamboat. So 50 mile stretch, very beautiful. There's still some wildlife that you need to keep an eye out for. Not as bad as the drive from Silverthorne to Kremlin, but still want to stay aware and a really beautiful drive that eventually leads to Steamboat. There's another FM light and sun sign, and another one. So driving over Rabbit Ears, you'll eventually see the two big rock formations that are essentially the Rabbit Ears. When you see those, you're about halfway to Steamboat from Kremlin. Eventually, you'll get to the bottom of Rabbit Ears Pass, and congratulations, you're now in beautiful Steamboat Springs. If you have any questions about real estate or recreation or anything else, please reach out to me, Ed Johnson, and I hope you have a wonderful stay. There's the ski resort right there. We need snow, but normally you'd see some runs. And town is just a few miles ahead.